Now, as you know, we are an energy-rich nation and we have decided to make ourselves energy poor. We used to have plentiful, cheap energy and now we have barely enough expensive energy of precarious reliability. This, as you know, is done in the name of saving the planet. But it will do nothing of the sort, of course, because global emissions are continuing to grow, even as our 1% of the world total continues to shrink. Those are just the facts. Now, let me show you some more examples of this expensive, farcical national self-harm in action. This hole in the ground represents the latest costly failure for the Snowy 2.0 pumped hydro project. The ground has collapsed because a massive tunnel boring machine is stuck and there's been a collapse. So the drilling is halted, another expensive delay, denied by the company for months but now confirmed. Remember they keep telling you that renewable energy is the cheapest form of energy? Yet we're spending a mozza on experimental projects like this, experiments with your money. Remember this Snowy Hydro 2.0 project was announced by Malcolm Turnbull six years ago with the predicted cost of $2 billion. It was supposed to produce electricity by 2025, bolstering our energy security. But Snowy Hydro has now admitted that its costs have blown out to $6 billion and there are reports already that it could be more like $8 billion. That's a 400% cost blowout and with the tunnelling machine now stuck, the dollars are going to be mounting daily, aren't they? Oh, and they've admitted they won't produce any electricity now until at least 2027, at least another four years. So our lack of energy security continues. What an absolute joke. A sensible country might have kept its coal-fired power stations running until it could get this stuff sorted out. But no, right around the country, coal-fired generators have been shut down and demolished, like this one at Port Augusta. Yeah, two coal-fired generations, uh, generators that were feeding into the national grid from Port Augusta in South Australia were shut down and demolished. But never mind. The Climate and Energy Minister Chris Bowen announced on this very weekend that $65 million of your money has been granted to a new solar thermal project nearby. It's experimental too, and if all goes to plan, it'll produce up to a third of the power the old power stations did but only when the sun is shining, of course. The minister says the taxpayer grant will supercharge a groundbreaking project. Well, we'll see. But what Bowen didn't mention is that this project was announced and backed by governments six years ago. Yeah, a grand announcement in 2017, complete with a $110 million loan from the federal government. So why isn't it powering our homes as we speak? Well, even with that big loan from taxpayers, the project couldn't satisfy the market, couldn't get enough finance, and it was cancelled. But now the same project is back, and this time, instead of a loan, it's managed to get a $65 million grant from the Albanese Labor government. They keep telling us, as I mentioned, that renewables are the cheapest and the best, so why do they have to keep subsidising them? Why do they have to keep pumping billions of dollars of our money into them, only to give us more expensive electricity and less reliable supplies. And it's the same with electric vehicles now. The Energy and Climate Change Minister was out spruiking a $90,000 Chinese-made electric ute on the weekend. Never mind its range and its cost will make it highly impractical for any real-life tradie. Bowen and other politicians are now pushing EVs relentlessly. The New South Wales Liberal government is looking at ways to force blocks of unit to install charging stations, along with suburban councils and the like. Again, if this stuff is so financially and practically viable, then you wouldn't need to do this, offering cash and tax incentives, spending public money on private charging stations and promoting these vehicles like some television game show of old. If they stacked up, you wouldn't have to do any of this. The net zero by 2050 push is costing you and us very dearly right now. With subsidies, grants and tax breaks flying everywhere, you know it's only going to get worse.